Amen, amen, amen. Now, we have the Word of God with us. The Word of God is living, it is powerful, it is active, uh, it's really wonderful. And the Word of God has been proven. Uh, this has been tried, tested, and been proven to transform lives. Amen? Amen. But just, I, I heard someone come, a preacher took the mic and said, and, and read that, uh, that nursery rhyme, Pussycat, Pussycat, where have you been? I've been to London to see the king, the queen rather, sorry, now it's king lah. Back then it was queen. What did you do there? I chased a mouse under the chair. So basically, what that person, it was a gentleman, I was a younger person back then, was trying to say was, and it stuck with me, stayed with me, is you went all the way to London to meet probably the most famous monarch in the world, and all you did was chase a mouse under her chair. So as a kid, I was thinking, I don't think there were any mice at the Buckingham Palace. Secondly, it's a cat. What do you expect a cat to do? You know, go and sit on the queen's lap. But now, as an older person, I understand what he was, the analogy that he was trying to make was basically saying, we have access to so many things. We have access to the Word of God. We have access to uh, online Bible studies. We have access to wonderful, godly people. All of them are sitting in the front row and all the rows as well. Uh, yeah, can, but you can find them here in the first row. But we sometimes don't engage with what we have. You call up Pastor Clarence for a cup of tea. Get something from him. Don't tell him all your old stories, all your grandma stories. No, get something from him. Squeeze him. When Jacob wrestled, <laughs> he didn't let the angel go. Uh, Pre-incarnate Christ, perhaps. Didn't let the angel, made sure he got, you bless me. Do that. You have access. So sometimes we are so inundated with data, with information. Everybody is sending us scripture verses uh, on WhatsApp that we cannot see the forest for the trees. Uh -huh. That's not the person sending you. It's whose fault is that? Is it the person sending you? Yeah, the people who send me, it's their fault because <laughs> that, you don't, you know, these people, it's their fault. But it's up to me on how I want to process the knowledge and the information that is laid out before me. Historically, this has been proven to be true. Non-Christians, atheist professors, attest to the death of Jesus, not the resurrection. They all acknowledge that he died on the cross. They all believe, they all believe that the disciples believe he rose up. All of them. So there's so many historical facts and information that we have in our hands. But all these scriptures, what do they do? They point us to the person of Jesus Christ. Guys watching at home, look at that picture on the wall of Jesus Christ. Just focus on that for two seconds. Everything about scripture is pointing to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to be so conscious of His presence. Because there's just so many things happening. There's this politics <laughs> inside of, 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 of Christendom, in the kingdom of Christ, kingdom of God. There's politics happening. There's this happening. There's jostling for power. So many things happening. And sometimes we are pushed to the middle of it. You've got no choice. But our focus and our attention and our desire is to be the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Always from the time you wake up to the time you sleep and even when you are sleeping, the Holy Spirit brings the knowledge and the person of Jesus Christ front and center while you are asleep. Amen. So we're going to go to the Word of God. And uh, hallelujah. Now, if you read 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, it talks about the son of perdition, the man of sin, the man of lawlessness. Now, is law good? If I were to ask you, is law good? Yes, I would say pretty much all laws, if it's uh, formulated by just people, it's always good. We know that the law came through Moses. Who gave it to Moses? 
God gave it to Moses. So the law, uh, the Old Testament Mosaic law, is good. But we also know that grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And as we allow ourselves to walk by the leading of the Holy Spirit, as we keep our eyes fixed upon the Lord Jesus Christ, He writes His law upon our hearts. Our job has been made so much easier. All we need to do, our work is to believe in the one the Father has sent, Jesus Christ. He does a miraculous, marvelous work in our hearts as we keep our eyes fixed on Him. I think we can do that. But yes, there's a lot of distraction, as I say. Sometimes even within the body of Christ, we get distracted with so many teachings, with so many this, with so many that. Look here, guys. No matter what your theology is, it doesn't matter. It still talks about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are united by this one common thread and one common denominator, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is alive today, amen? amen. You spoke with Him this morning. And if you spent a little bit of time, He would have spoken to you. Or maybe He was, you just didn't listen. Or maybe you did. But you know that He is alive and well. He is alive and kicking, amen? The grave could not hold Him down. And the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is where? I did one Hulk Hogan voice because I saw him the other day doing promote. And you guys can just respond like that. Hey, where is the Holy Spirit? The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Where is that spirit? In you. And what is he doing you? Giving life to your mortal bodies. Why? Because you are a representative representative of Jesus. You are a holy royal priesthood. Hallelujah. So we are set apart for a purpose. No matter where you are placed, whether it is in your college, in your it's already 10, 11 45. My goodness. Wherever you are placed, you are called to reveal his glory. Amen. Do not be distracted by the problems that you face. Do not be distracted by the challenges. Why? Because God can use your circumstances and your situations for His glory and your benefit. Have that idea in your mind when you're going through a tough time or an easy, easy time. Have this idea. It will be used for God's glory. You just allow the Spirit of God to minister to you so that you'll be so focused and be so absorbed by the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. So conscious of His presence. So 2 Thessalonians talks about the lawless one, the one who has no law. We have already established the fact by you that law is good. And this person is also known as the man of sin. And I'm going to read from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. Satan will soon be thrown in the lake of fire. We do not throw our lot in with losers. Jesus, he be thou winner man. <laughs> when I was younger, I heard somebody sing that. So it stayed with me. He be the winner man. So the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. And I'm just going to break this down. We know that this lawless one, some call him the Antichrist, man of sin, man of son of perdition. He is sent by Satan. He is there to do the works of Satan. And he will use all sorts of displays of power. Look here. Who is the all-powerful one? Jesus. This is a counterfeit. And people love counterfeits for some reason. Asians especially. We love... 
counterfeit display of power, signs and wonders. Who performs signs and wonders? You. God, God performs signs and wonders through you. But here we see the son of perdition also copycat, being a copycat and doing the same thing. Why? We do it to glorify our God. That is to glorify another entity, another ideology, another philosophy, self. There are, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of Anton LaVey and the Church of Satan. Outwardly, they portray themselves as being atheists. Outwardly, they say we're atheists, we just uh, glorify the self. But in reality, they move quite powerfully in uh, demonic uh, enchantment or whatever you call it. Uh, so they are actually very demonic. They pretend to be atheists. We don't believe in God, we don't believe in the devil, we just glorify the self. Yes, so here we see about the man of lawlessness. Law is good because it keeps you in a safe place. Law is good because it brings you to a place of success and blessings. The great thing about Christianity is that God writes the law in our hearts. Two blessings and success, four blessings and success. So through signs and wonders, this man of perdition will perform to serve that lie. Now mind you, today is not a treatise about the end times and eschatology and whatnot, but it is just to explain to you that there is a mindset and an ideology that is prevalent in the world today. Because signs and wonders are good. Displays of power are not necessarily bad. They can also be good. But if it is for the wrong purpose, if it does not glorify God, then that is something that we need to eschew and reject and say, no, I do not want to have a part of it. Why? Because today in the name of inclusivity and tolerance, a lot of wrong ideologies have crept into the body of Christ. You know, they think that they are reflecting the true nature of Christ, but in reality, you know why? Because love saves and if you are in trouble, love will not say, hey, you do you, you be you. If it makes you happy, that's fine. No. Jesus came to this world to save, seek and save those that were lost. Amen? So if someone is lost, sometimes uh, the so-called uh, inclusive people, they say, hey, it's fine, it's okay. You live the way you are. Yes, we love the sinner, but we don't accept the sin. And sometimes it we have to be, the love will be tough. Love wants. And so here we see uh, this lawless one, these lawless ideologies, they sometimes manifest in different forms. And now in the world today, it is manifesting itself with a very smiley, kind, embracing face. You know, with a nice big Catholic heart. I don't know. Nice big... Uh, you know, beautiful looking heart. I love that heart, by the way. I, you know, but it comes in that kind of a, I, all of y'all are accepted, all of you. Yes, all of you are accepted. But you come through the cleansing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be transformed. Live a productive, abundant life. So this right now, this comes, this, but this is actually lawlessness. This is perdition. This is sin, the Bible says but it comes forth as something very nice. And we as the church, we need to understand that these things, if we embrace these things, young people especially, not just young people, old people, outwardly very nice. When you talk to them, you find they are so bitter. That's why they embrace funny ideologies. <laughs> you know, outwardly they're very nice. You Little bit, little bit, you prod them, they will start showing their truth colors and temper. They're so angry with the church or angry with God or, or whatnot. Amen. So I just want to talk a little bit about this lawless aspect and how to counter or rather not counter because we are already living and breathing in the, how should I say, the time of God. Uh, God is the, the, the Kairos time of God is where we are currently at. So it's not an eschatology. I'm not going to talk about the end times because in the past 30 years, I've changed my stance maybe twice. 
So maybe in 30 years, we can have this conversation again. And then probably we'll all know better about, you know, the end times and whatnot. Huh? It's a date, Pastor Jai, it's a date. In 30 years, we are going to have this conversation again. And then I'm sure we'll, by then we'll know a little bit better. Uh, our positions may have changed regarding this. Uh, so we are seeing this happen right now, a societal breakdown. It may even be amongst our kids. Uh, they come to us and tell us that, you know, these things are okay, these things are fine, we need to embrace them, we need to accept them. I say, yes, I agree. I agree. But we need to show them the truth, why they were made. You were made in the image of God. And God made us male and female in His image to declare His praises and His glory. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 can we have that? For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. And so the Antichrist spirit or whatever the spirit, the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. So there is a certain lawlessness that is prevalent in society. Is it prevalent in our hearts, in our homes? We need to check. Am I following the path that God has prepared for me? Am I loving my neighbor? Because if we want to make, bring, bring forth transformation to this nation, we need to first love the person who's standing, sitting next to you. Somebody to come forward for prayer for anxiety for one week you've been having anxiety come for prayer and bring the person that caused the anxiety as well together with you are you able to look that person in the eye and say I love you it's not always easy but this is who we are we are not of this world people of God you need to understand you are yes maybe in some Place, you know, in some ways, you are just a regular guy or a regular gal or whatever, that's fine. But you are royal priesthood. You have new spiritual heavenly DNA. You make a difference. You can make a difference. You carry. Uh, you're born of that incorruptible seed. You have greatness within you, each and every one of you. You have greatness within you. The guy watching with the floral sarong, you have greatness within you. But what do we need to do? We need to understand the perfect law of God. Oh, no, we are living in a new covenant, no more law. No. We need to understand the law, the perfect law of God. For the secret power of lawlessness. Why is it secret? Because it's hidden. Uh, like a snake hiding behind a couch. It's hidden. But God will always reveal. No matter what is hidden, God will reveal the good and the bad. Because some people, they do good. They don't want people to know. God will exalt you. In due time. In due time. Because you're not looking for man's praise or acceptance. And likewise, if we are doing something that we ought not do, the light will reveal. The light is Scripture. Amen? Whenever Scripture comes and reveals something about you, allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart to bring about change. It's not to condemn you. When you read something and it condemns you, believe me, it is your own conscience condemning you. It's not the Spirit of God. It's not the Spirit of God. He's highlighting something in your life so that you will surrender it to Him, place it at His feet, and be set free. Uh, so please do not be condemned. You may be in, you know, in, in living a life that you're not entirely pleased with. And when you read, and you don't want to read the scripture because it points a finger at you. Nah, it's pointing a finger at you so to lift you up and to exalt, to cleanse you. This is the will of God. Know the heart of God. He is so good. He wants to bring a change. And guess what? It can happen today. This very instant, something can take place in your heart which should prepare the way for the rest of your life. Amen? Pave the way for the rest of your life. So the secret power of lawlessness is already at 
work. I think 1 John chapter 4 verse 3 says, the spirit of the Antichrist is already in operation. And what is the spirit of the Antichrist? Anything that goes against giving glory to God, that's the spirit of the Antichrist. Can it operate in our lives? Yes, it can. If we do things that are antithetical to what God, what Jesus died for, we can entertain or dance with the spirit of the Antichrist. I'm telling you, he's a horrible dancer. You know who's a great dancer? The Holy Spirit. You don't have to do anything. You just like, he does everything, takes the lead. I bet Jesus is a good dancer as well. When he turned water into wine, pretty sure there was a lot of dancing happening there as well. Jesus is about celebration. The whole point of the new covenant symbolized by wine is celebration. Believe me. But then all the problems and the trials and Jesus said, you know, you will have in this world, you have problems. Yes. But our hearts, when we are so conscious of the person and the presence of Jesus Christ, you will genuinely see a transformation take place. So what we want to do is not complain about our circumstance. As difficult as it may be, maybe we start thanking God and giving Him glory. That's something that you can do today. You may not want to do it, but do lah. Fake it until you make it lah. Just can. You know, I know of people when they see other people speaking in tongue, they also like blah, blah, blah. everybody knows they're faking. But they desire it so much, they want to, and then suddenly they start really genuinely speaking. I'm not going to knock that person. Or, you know, that's not how I would encourage somebody to, you know, to, to, to receive the gift. But hey, such was their faith. I know of people when they got saved, uh, and then suddenly the Lord pushes them into to do deliverance ministry. What is supposed to do? Take the Bible and go whack the people. They get delivered. They told. I used to do that. It's like, okay. I mean, I can still borrow it if it's someone that I don't like, right? I can still pretend like, you know, like that. I said, I don't have to do it now. I just step into the place. This guy, like, even before the guy comes, demons outside, hey, the flood coming, the flood coming. The thing will go off. And then he will pray, da, 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 and he'll talk to the person. Okay, you receive Jesus into your heart now, the thing won't come back. They don't receive the thing. When he goes back, hey, oh, he went already. Bring it back, call back, call back the flood. True story. True story. Why? Because you are born of the incorruptible seed. You also have a calling upon your life. All of us have a calling. Minister of reconciliation on top of whatever else. Every one of us is a minister of reconciliation. Bring the lost, the hopeless, the sick, the tired, the weary to the saving knowledge and power of Jesus Christ. So guys, yes, we ourselves are going through ish situations. Why? Because when God wants to take you to the next level, uh, you are in uncharted waters, you know. For you lah. Not for him and other people. You're in uncharted territory. Sometimes you're like, oh, oh, what's going on? How do I, I, I navigate through this? Don't worry. Jesus sleeping in the boat also, he's still in the boat. You will get to the other side. You know why Jesus said, ah, okay, now we're going there. When Jesus says, now we are going there, what does that mean? We are going there. Squall, storm, whatever, sea monster, no worries. You are getting to the other side. Because Jesus said it. Amen? Amen? They were so conscious of the storm. Peter was conscious of the storm when he was walking upon the water. We need to be conscious of Jesus and what he said. Hallelujah. And the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. So you want prophecy? It's here. Every promise you're talking about Jesus, everything that Jesus gave you is prophecy. I mean, it's great when somebody lays hands on you and says things about you. Fine. You know, I, I enjoy it as well. Uh, I'm sure every one of us does. We, may, we pretend like we don't, but we do. And that's fine. But man, I have access to prophecy every second if I wanted to. Don't be so inundated by all the scriptures that you cannot see the forest for the trees. See Jesus for who He is. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the secret power of lawlessness, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. We understand this. But you and I, we are placed here by the Holy Spirit to hold back the work of the enemy. 
to put, to bring people back into the right way of living. Amen? We live and function under a different law. Would you say amen? amen. Which law do you live under? Really? The people at home are shouting and giving me the answer. The only thing is I cannot hear them. But you guys here are so soft. What law are we living under? Romans chapter 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and that, mind you, this is law. I heard a story, I don't know how much this is true. One guy was driving without his license late at night, got stopped by the police and when they asked for his uh, license, his license apparently expired, I don't know. He found one old pastor credential card, I don't think it was even his and then he went and showed it to the, to the policeman. You break the law, it does not matter who you are or what you are. Have you heard of the law of gravity? No. You're not, you want to test it out? It's like an awesome law. <laughs> the law of gra gravity does not suggest, it dictates that if I were to jump out of the fourth floor of a building or the second floor of the building, I'm going to either die or break my legs. No, I'm a child of God. I spent hours praying. <laughs> you can see my face. Kepahalaan saya ni Banyak ni Cross the road also no need to look left and right So if I were to jump out of the window or the floor I will die because that's a law It's not something that I can circumnavigate Only if the Lord says do it Only if the Lord says do it And you have prescription medication, don't do it Huh? Only if you know for a fact that the Lord has told you to do it, then you do it. Otherwise, you don't do because it's law. Law governs our lives, our activities. But now there is a law of the spirit of life in Christ. He has set me free from a previous law, which was the law of sin and death. That is the law that we used to live in before we knew Christ. Now a question. Can the law of sin and death have power over me if I am a believer? That's a million dollar question. We need to ask a lot of good questions. You know, we need to ask a lot of good questions so that we can grow in our faith. My answer would be, not as far as my spirit man is concerned because my spirit man is perfect. But if I choose not to live under the law of the spirit of life in Christ, I believe that I will not be entirely free of the law of sin and death. If I live wrong, I know I'm a believer, you know, I, I talk to people about Jesus, I can sing some songs, but I don't live according to His law then yes, when it comes to your soul and definitely your body, the law of sin and death can still be in operation. You will still go to heaven smelling of smoke. How many of you smell of smoke every day? Okay. Guys at home all like, hey, hey, like that. no, nobody can see them. Here all like, what? Huh? You will make it to heaven. Why? Because your spirit man has been set free and you are perfect in the sight of God. But now, you and I, we have a great opportunity today to submit ourselves and surrender to the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which will bring about a change and transformation. Amen? Amen. James chapter 1 verse 25 But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. Earlier, we read that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Freedom. 
Another verse about law talking about freedom. Do we want to live free in Christ? Absolutely. I want to live free in Christ. Every day I want to get up in the morning and be so excited. I don't want to get up in the morning and then go back to sleep. I want to be excited to seize the day, carpe diem, only be done through the Holy Spirit to be successful. James 1.25, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So here, you want to break this down? There's a lot of things to break down, but it's really powerful. It closes, uh, this verse closes with, they will be blessed in what they do. Do we want to be blessed in what we do? Otherwise, we're just wasting our time. We're just going through the motions. It's pointless. Or very little value to what we are doing. We want to be blessed. And this particular verse is teaching and speaking to us on how we need to live our lives. What we need to do. They will be blessed in what they do. Who are these people? Whoever. That means you. You know? That means you. Whoever looks intently. That means you need to look into the Word of God or whatever it is that the verse is talking about. You need to look with great focus intently. What is intently? Don't just look intensely. Some people, they look at you, they look at you intensely, you get scared. Look intently. When I want to pray for somebody, I look intently at them. If I look intensely at them, they'll get scared. Look intently into the perfect law. Can I hear you say, repeat after me, perfect law. law. Y'all want to hear it in Tamil? I've learned that. I know how to say it in Tamil now. No, you don't want? I'm going to say it anyway. Paripurnamana Satam. Yep, I learned that. (laughs) Hey, Tamil pastor lah. Correct, isn't it? Jesu, am I correct, right? Can, 90%. Okay, almost correct. English, uh. perfect law. I was saying that like six times. So now I know who does not pay attention in church. (laughs) Okay. Whoever looks intently into the perfect law, and what does this perfect law do? Gives you freedom. Isn't that awesome? And what does this freedom do? It uh, It brings about blessing. But there are certain caveats that we need to... uh, Adhere to. We need to look intently into the law. We need to continue in it. Don't suddenly, okay, I read Bible two hours today. For the next two months, I'm not going to read my Bible. No, we don't want that. Daily bread, ma. Daily bread, ma. Uh, Take. The Holy Spirit will lead you. Take what you need for that particular day or whatever God gives you for that particular day. And continues in it, which is the second point. Not forgetting what they have heard. That means you're not reading it religiously. I fulfill my duty. God now owes me a lot. No, we are not doing it uh, religiously, but because we know that there is life in the Word of God. My Word is spirit. It is life sharper than two eight swords. So we come there hungry, hungry to get the Word of God. Not forgetting what they have heard, which means meditation, I can do that in Tamil, but I won't. Not forgetting what they have heard, meditate upon the Word of God, meditate upon the God. And what they have heard, they apply. The Bible says, how can you love a God that you cannot see, whom you have not seen, when you cannot love your brother whom you can see? (sighs) You need to apply lah. Today you need to call that sister-in-law or that you know, the sibling rivalry that just went on too long, ridiculously went on for years because of pride. Today lah. Hey, uncle, auntie, that money that you owe me, <laughs> you can keep it. It's okay. <laughs> Unity in the body of Christ. Now, I think it's time for our family members and our unchurched loved ones to start knowing the love and power of God. Amen. How, is the, how are they going to know it? Through your phone. Your phone. Very powerful. Oh, Samsung. Very powerful. 
You're going to give them a call. You're going to talk to them. Amen. So go back and meditate upon this verse, James 1, 125. There's just a lot of uh, information and knowledge, godly knowledge there. So he says, perfect law. What is this perfect law? If you were to read the whole of James chapter 1, James talks about taking the word of God into you. Taking the word of God into you. Allowing the word of God to just saturate your heart and your soul. After that, what happens? The word of God takes you. First you take the word. And then the word takes you. It's actually an old Chinese proverb that is said in the flip side, but it also applies here. It says, first, the man takes the drink. Don't say amen. Then the drink takes the drink. Then the drink takes the man. Hmm? Megadeth also sang a song using that. I've seen the man use the needle. I've seen the needle use the man. In the flip side, it also works. You first take in the word of God and then the word of God takes you. And then all heaven breaks loose, I believe. And all heaven, all hell flees. Hallelujah. I think I've got like another 16 seconds to go. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. How many of you all have your handphones with your... Not yet? Carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. This is what we are called to do. This is, to some extent, Christianity in a nutshell. It is about bearing one another's burdens. Yes, you run really fast. Yes, you are a high flyer. But we are in this together. And sometimes we need to stop, you know, and... For the past couple of months, that's what I've been doing. And I, the Lord is probably teaching me certain things. Hey, you need to understand better about the body of Christ. It says body of Christ. It's not about your pastoral role. It's a body of Christ. So sometimes you need to take a breather. You need to take a step back and deal with certain issues before you can think about being the man or whatever. You know, it's God's way of telling you that you are not the man. I'm the man. That's what God is saying. Carry each other's burdens and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. And when you fulfill the law of Christ, you will be blessed. When is God pleased with us? When we take time out of our busy schedules. How many of y'all tell God that y'all are very busy? Lie, I can see. In, I can, I can see in faith. There's like one kind of like one ha broken halo that I know. God, I'm very busy. I have no time for this. I have no time for that. I have no time for this. No. Make time to carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Let me give you a very simple analogy. This is what I want to do because I really need to do this. I need to accomplish this because this will bring blessings to me. This will bring blessings to whatever, da-da-da. Now, there's this guy there, injured by the side of the road. I've got no time because I need to serve God. I need to serve His people. But when I make time to see to this person, I'm going to go down in Scripture. The Good Samaritan was praised by Jesus in Scripture Whatever I need to accomplish, I believe more God will accomplish it for me. Without me even taking the effort because I did what was needful, not what was urgent. We are so caught up in the urgency of things that we forget to do what is needful, what is important, what is important. Seeking His face. Fellowshipping with Him and Carry bearing one another's burdens. Can we start doing that? Right? Call. You all are calling the sister, that cousin that you all didn't talk to for a long time, right? You all are cancelling the debt, right? Okay, like maybe you, all, you need to pray for that, but call, establish contact. 
ask forgiveness. I didn't do anything wrong. It's okay, you still can ask forgiveness. I, my dad taught me this from young. Ask forgiveness even though you didn't do anything wrong. Forgive and ask forgiveness. I, said, I didn't do, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. In the, in the kingdom of God, things operate a little differently. Amen? Ask forgiveness. It's okay. I'm telling you, breakthrough will take place. Breakthrough, huh? That deal that you couldn't close for so long and you don't know why, suddenly, top, it's closed. Uh, that so-called issue that you've been facing for so long, which your doctor said, no, it's going to get worse, suddenly gets better. Hallelujah. When we forgive and ask forgiveness. Amen. So, you see, the body of Christ, I really love this, uh, uh, what do you call it, this part about carrying one another's burdens. Because in premarital counseling, how many of y'all are going through premarital counseling right now? How many of y'all are planning to get married soon, next year? Okay, married people get married again. Because the young people are, I don't know, they'll be listening to the wrong thing. Just now we read, right? We need to look intently into the word of God. Not intently into what the world says. The world has been saying a lot of bad things and wrong things about marriage. And because of that, a lot of young people, they're thinking, why bother getting married? No, if you read the word of God and if you listen to godly people, you'll want to get married. Unless the Lord gives you that gift of not getting married, God bless you. It is God's will and intention for all of you to get married. And to, uh, you know, unless the Lord specifically tells you not to. Some people, yes, God has told them. Even Apostle Paul says, you want to do ministry effectively. It's easy if you don't have a nagging husband, isn't it, Pastor Debbie? <laughs> Easier to preach on a Sunday when the husband didn't give you a hard time in the morning, right? Like, in it. That's what Apostle Paul says. But we know that it is God's plan for men to not be alone. For them to be betrothed and to be engaged and to be married. So when we talk to people about premarital counseling, we tell, especially the young men, you are, you are an individual. We are all individuals. Your bride to be is also an individual. The great thing about Christianity is that it's not a cult. It's not uniformity. Unity is not uniformity. Uniformity is a cult where you have to give up your individual, give up everything, and then you like uh, follow the commune, what they say you have to do, whether you like it or not. But here, I retain my individuality. But because I understand there are things at play which are greater than me, I'm willing to lay down I'm willing to connect and be united with a body for a common cause. Likewise, marriage, you are coming together. Believe me, the synergy is great. You are going to accomplish, husband and wife are going to accomplish far greater than the sum of its individual parts. I've got another 16 seconds. <laughs> so, yeah. Somebody's halo just spoke to me and said, you got another 16 seconds. So same way when we carry one another's burdens, what we are doing is, I'm not losing out. I'm not losing out. I'm actually willingly for the sake of the greater good, for God's glory, lay down my comfort, lay down my trajectory to success and do what is needful for the body of Christ. Outcome greater than what I was going to accomplish on my own. That's how the, the, the kingdom operates. Kingdom values, kingdom principles, different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I close with this verse. Whoever sows to please, Galatians chapter 6 verse 8. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction and Sowing to please the flesh can also be in the area of ministry. Unfortunately, I, 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 I found that out as well. It can be done out of selfish motives or selfish reasons or whatever. From the flesh, I will reap destruction. But whoever sows to please the Spirit. Now, Spirit good, right? Holy Spirit good, isn't it? God good, devil bad. CK probably knows the song. 
I don't know. Lah. The Gamo and Key, bro. Your generation. <laughs> All older than you. God good, devil bad. Holy Spirit good, right? So, to want to please Him, I think there will be something that should be easy for us, right? Something that we want to do because God so good, ma. So beautiful, so wonderful. Saved us, set us free, put us on the rock, cleansed us. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. And eternal life also means abundant life, which means life here on earth. Not just in the afterlife, but here on earth. And so I just want to encourage you, today, today we can make a decision to say, yes, Lord, I want to look intently into your word, into your law. I want to be a blessing to the people around me because naturally it doesn't make sense because I have to sacrifice so much of my comfort and my life to see to other people. But believe me, you will sow, you will reap life. You will reap eternal life and blessings. But here I'm so busy serving God, not realizing that I'm doing it for myself. I am going to reap destruction because I'm sowing in the flesh. It's for selfish needs and selfish purposes, not for the body of Christ. Greater love has no man. Full stop. Bye-bye. No. Greater love has no man than one who will lay down his life for his sibling, modern language, for his brother and sister. I don't want somebody to puncture my car. I don't want any millennial or Gen Z to come and puncture my car. I don't want that. Amen. I pray that the Holy Spirit will minister to our hearts because believe me, if there's anything, if there's anyone here who really needs to take this into their heart, it's me. It's me. The Lord will frustrate my plans if He feels that it's being done selfishly. Not because He doesn't love me, because He wants to teach me a lesson. No, because He wants me to get on the right path. And sometimes the right path is serving others. Laying your life down for your brother. Your sister. Thank you, Father. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I give you glory, Father. Minister, O oh God, to each and every one of us here, Lord. We are made in your image, O oh God, and the moment, Lord, we received you into our hearts, Lord, we are, Lord, that incorruptible seed, O oh God, we are born from that, Father, which means greatness and eternity is within us, O oh God. Not in the afterlife only, God, but here, Lord, we are able to accomplish, O oh God, great things for a great God, O oh Lord, who loved us, O oh God who's been so kind to us, oh God, who gave his life up for us, oh Lord, hallelujah. I pray, oh Lord, Holy Spirit, minister to us, oh God. Takabashaki kalamayebe. Blessed Father. Bless, oh Lord, as we unite our hearts for a common good, common purpose, oh Lord, common cause, oh God, to bring gospel light into this world, Father. A world that is, hallelujah, covered in darkness. Hearts that are covered in darkness, Father. That we will pray, O oh Lord, and step out, O oh God, to bring enlightenment of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You've been a fantastic group of people. God bless you. Some of you guys have a big smiles on your face. I'm assuming you are MU fans. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for the great word, Pastor Dale.